Joining me now is Katherine Jacobson. She's a professor of epidemiology at George Mason University. Katherine, thanks so much for coming in. Put this in perspective for us, these measures by the U.S. Is this an overreaction or is this necessary given the unknowns about this virus? So there's still a lot we don't know. One of the things that's become clear as more case data has come in this week is that the incubation period is really long. So if we only maybe had three days or five days from when people would get infected to when symptoms would show up, that would make this a lot easier. Up to 14 days is really long, and that makes uh, these monitoring periods much longer. The other complication this week is that we're getting more evidence that a lot of people have mild infection, which is great, but from a containment standpoint, people who have a mild infection may be contagious. They could potentially pass this to vulnerable individuals and not even realize that, that they were doing that. So that, those two things uh, are making this response a little bit uh, more extensive than would have been expected a couple of weeks ago. That goes into one of my questions for later, but the incubation period being 14 days, um, that is a long, long time. And it, it adds another challenge to this because you could be sick and, and not even know it. So how much more of a challenge is it for health experts to, to get, get a hold of this virus given that incubation period? Yeah, so one of the challenges we'll see is case counts. So everybody who got sick this week was infected in China before any restrictions for travel in China went into effect. So we're seeing these case counts go up now. We don't yet know how much the travel restrictions already in place are going to maybe slow the number of new cases over the coming week or the coming two weeks. So everything just takes more time when there is such a long incubation period. And when there is an outbreak like this that people are worried about, needing to wait for that data is something that is uh, causing a lot of people to have some anxiety. Yeah, on top of everything else. What do we know about the people that are getting sick? Are these older people who are more susceptible to getting this disease, or is it people that are relatively healthy that are, that are getting it? So it looks right now like most of the people who are getting sick tend to be adults, and especially older adults. It's not quite clear yet whether maybe there are children who are getting sick and maybe they just don't have a lot of symptoms. There are a lot of infectious diseases where kids just, they're resilient and, and they don't have those symptoms. The deaths so far have mostly been in older people who have other health issues, so existing heart or lung or liver or other issues that put them at risk of any infection becoming much more serious. So for right now, when we're seeing those counts about the number of deaths and the number of people who have recovered, the recovery counts are well underestimated. If people did not die and they were diagnosed a week ago, chances are they're feeling perfectly healthy now. So uh, the situation as far as case fatality rate is looking better as we get more data. The information on contagiousness though, it's looking more contagious than we had initially thought. Really quickly, we don't have a whole lot of time left. What is most concerning about this virus for you? Uh, for right now, again, it's that we've got a very long duration that we have to wait, and there are a lot of people who have traveled all over the world from various places that we're going to have to wait and see if local transmission starts occurring outside of China. I'm sure we'll talk to you again. Catherine Jacobson, Professor of Epidemiology at George Mason University. Thanks so much.